then the last word, the Lord is coming to you. So that means the expectation of the Lord from us is watchfulness and readiness. So watchfulness is very, very important. So sometimes we are not watchful as we are expected. So there are five virgins were in the right place. They were in the right time. And they were in the right event. Everything was right. But one thing was missing. They were not with man. They did not have the heart. They have the lamp. So they had the wedding dress. They were in the company of people who were expecting the bridegroom. And they were in the right spot or the way that the bridegroom will come. But they were not with them. So that is a warning to us. So when God comes, we should be ready. So watchfulness and readiness is very, very important. The book ends with the longing of his people for his return. Yes, the longing is there. The longing will be there. The bride expects the bridegroom. There is a longing. It is emotional, spiritual. So this book and the Bible ends with grace for all. The last verse talks about grace for all. So the grace is available for all. Whoever reads the book, the grace is available. Whoever listens to this book, grace is available. But they can reject. Sadly, many people will reject. Old Testament ends with a curse. So Malachi forces, I will come and strike the earth with curse. So but the New Testament ends with grace. Because it is new covenant. So old covenant. Those who rejected the law. Will be punished by the law. And they will be stricken. And they will experience curse. So only Malachi wrote that. But in the new covenant. Lord Jesus Christ is gracious. That he has forgiven our sins. Because of his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. So New Testament ends with grace. The basis of new covenant. Old Testament, the basis is the law. New Testament, it is the new covenant by Lord Jesus Christ. So the beatitudes of revelation. So here we see seven, seven words of blessing. Yes, so the blessed words. In the Old Testament, we see several words like that. Like in Psalms, blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Then Matthew 5, we see Lord Jesus Christ speaking about the blessed are the poor, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are those who persecuted, and all those things. So even in Revelation, we see seven verses. So seven, again, it is a number of completion. We saw seven seals, seven vows. And seven trumpets, here we see seven verses of blessing. So the first verse is those who read and hear. So the revelation is not to create terror in our hearts and minds. Some people preach revelation to create terror. So to make us feel afraid. But revelation is written as a blessing. So when we read it, we are blessed. When we hear it, we are blessed. Hear means it should be publicly read in the church. So there are certain denominations. They follow the church order of reading the scripture. In some churches, revelation is not read at all. But the Lord expects us to read in as a public reading in the congregation. So blessed are those who die in the Lord. Yes, already we have seen that. So we go into his presence. First death liberates us from the second death. So only we are blessed. Since we are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the first death liberates us. Second death and 
it helps us to go into eternal life. So we are not afraid of death. The third is, blessed are those who are away, those who are watching, and those who are keeping the garments pure or holy. That means eternal watchfulness, perpetual readiness is essential. If we are ready, always waiting, watching, and working, then we are blessed. And blessed are those invited for the marriage of the Lamb. That is another great thing. So it is going to be the only global, universal, historical, one-time event. And we are invited for that. So there are people who fight for not inviting in certain weddings. There will be brothers, sisters, friends who say, you did not invite me for your wedding. But here we have the invitation. So that is God's gracious invitation. Then first resurrection. Those who have died in Christ, those saints, they will experience first resurrection. They are blessed people because the second death have no power over them. So they are unlike others who will be raised for judgment. Here they are raised to receive, into, to be received into glory. And those who obey the prophecy, it is those who keep the word. Yes, Revelation 1, 3 talks about those who read and those who hear. So Revelation 22, 7 says, who keeps, who follows, who reads, who meditates, who applies in their personal life, everyday life, so they are blessed. So then those who keep commandments. So those who keep the command, those who ask the rules in the blood of Jesus Christ, those who love him, so we can put it in any, those who love him will keep commandments. Who are those who love him? Those are friends by the way. So it could be interpreted in any way. So those who keep covenant. So there are seven verses that talks about blessing. So that gives us the completeness of the revelation, the book of Revelation. So what we see is, so the Lord's coming is near. So Lord's coming is sure. So it is not about whether he will come or not. It is about when he will come. So it could be any time. So as we are speaking, he could come. So that should be our anticipation and expectation. All are revealed for our edification and strengthening in our faith. So why should we read Revelation? For our edification. For our faith to be strengthened, increased. So we have to read it, maybe at least once a year or more of It does not create confusion or terror, but it's a blessing. So Revelation is not a terror book. It is not intended to create fear, psychosis, or it doesn't make us to be paranoid. Instead, it gives us blessing and inspiration and courage. So the important thing is prepare, prepare, prepare. So we cannot in the last minute find oil for the lamp. The five virgins cannot beg, they cannot borrow, they cannot steal. Even if they would have begged, the other five virgins would have not given. Even if they, they, if they wanted to borrow, they could not have loaned it. They cannot steal. So they have to prepare themselves. So in the same way, we have to prepare. Prepare for his coming. So always be prepared. So the revelation challenges us, inspires us, reminds us that our life will consummate. The history of humanity will consummate in his second coming. So if 
in case we die before the second coming, we will be part of the first resurrection. So in any way, so we will be experiencing our seeing, our being part of the glorious second coming of Lord Jesus Christ. For that, we should be always prepared. So let us close our eyes.